In less than a year, we are going to experience something that only happens once every four years, something that has a rippling effect through the entire crypto market. And the ones who fully understand this and make decisions off of this will be the ones who become very, very rich. What I'm talking about is the Bitcoin halving. Now, some of you may already be familiar with this, but not to the level that I'll be sharing with you in today's video. I'm going to show you what's happened every single time in the past when we had a Bitcoin halving, what I think will happen next year with the next Bitcoin halving, and exactly what I think you should be doing to take advantage of all of this. As always, before we get into it, make sure you guys smash that like button, subscribe if you guys haven't already. I make videos all about crypto and how you can become smarter and richer with it. So if that interests you, consider subscribing. But without further ado, let's get into the video. All right, so what is the Bitcoin halving and why does it play such a big impact on Bitcoin and the whole crypto market? Essentially, the halving plays a really big role when it comes to mining. And if you don't know what mining is, you can check out my previous video. But essentially, it's when people validate transactions on the blockchain. And for doing that, they get rewarded in Bitcoin. But what the halving does is it cuts that reward that these miners are making in half. For example, back in 2009, if you had been mining Bitcoin, you were rewarded 50 Bitcoins per block that you validated. And then in 2012, when the first halving occurred, that reward was decreased from 50 to 25. And then again in 2016, it went from 25 to 12.5. And finally, the most recent one in 2020, where it decreased to 6.25 Bitcoins per block that you mined. Now, the point I'm trying to get across is each time we have a halving, the rewards that miners make get cut in half, meaning the people who mine will be making less money. Now, I'll get to why this is a big deal later in the video, but so far we've only had three halvings and Bitcoin is estimated to have 64 halvings and the last one being in the year 2140. But like I said, the next one is expected to occur next year in April 2024, which will cut the rewards from 6.25 to 3.125 Bitcoins per block mined. Now, I know what you're thinking. What's the point of all this? Why does this even have to happen? But to understand that, we need to go back in Bitcoin's history. You see, Bitcoin was created by an anonymous person who people referred to as Satoshi Nakamoto. Now, Satoshi limited the production of all Bitcoins to 21 million Bitcoins. This means the max amount of Bitcoins that can be out there in the world is 21 million. Once that last Bitcoin is mined, no more Bitcoins can come into circulation. So whoever owns Bitcoin when that happens in their wallet, those are the only people who can sell, transfer, or make any transactions with it. What this does is it puts a cap as to how much Bitcoins can be out there in circulation. Once we hit that number, we can't print, create, or do anything to get more Bitcoins. Whatever is out there is out there. And this is the complete opposite of what we see in the real world with traditional banking. Currencies like the US dollar, Japanese yen, or the Indian rupees all are owned by the government. And the government can pick and choose how much money they print. And we all know what happens when too much money is printed. We're, we're seeing that right now. The value of the currency goes down and it's not worth as much, meaning you can can't buy the things you used to buy anymore because the value of the currency went down. There's too much of that money out there. And that's what Bitcoin solves, the issue of inflation and not letting the currency become undervalued. And that's why the halvings are set in place to control inflation and not let the value of Bitcoin's price come down, essentially preventing Bitcoin from getting too inflated and losing its value, like I said earlier. Okay, now that you understand the halving a little bit more, let me hop into my computer and show you the real effect a halving has on not only the price of Bitcoin, but the entire crypto market. All right, so I have this chart pulled up over here that shows us each and every single time we've had a halving in the past. And like I said, we've had three halvings in the past. And I just want to quickly show you what's happened after each and every single halving. So the first halving we had was back in 2012. The price was about $12 at first and it skyrocketed right away all the way up to $1,000 before we saw a pullback. But that was almost a 10,000% return on your money. Now, yes, after the halving, we saw the price shoot up like crazy. And remember, this is over a two year time frame from 2012 to 2014. But look at what happens after the halving. After two years of straight up bull movement, we have saw a little price reduction over the next 2014 to 2016. So this is two years um, where there is no halving. We had two years after the halving, we saw a huge run up in its price. And then two years after we saw a little price pullback. 
And then look, at the next halving, which is now 2016, the price was about, I would say, $600. We saw the halving occur, and over the next two years, from 2016 to 2018, we saw another bull market. We saw 3,000% return on your money. And then the same thing happened again. We saw the price come back down. We went from about, uh, what is this? $11,000 in its price all the way back down to about 2600 which is a huge, huge reduction in its price. And then we were hovering, hovering, hovering. And then exactly two years after the bull market in 2020, we saw the next halving, which is the most recent one that we saw two years ago where we hit our all time high of close to $60,000. And then look, the same exact thing happened, which we saw each and every single time with the previous halvings. The price is slowly coming back down. We saw two years of bull market, two years of bull market, two years of bear market, and now we're going to see another two years of bear market before the next halving, which is going to be 2024. Look, in my eyes, this is clearly a cycle. It's the same thing that's happening every single time after each halving. And the one thing to know is after each halving, we see a new all-time high set. The all-time high here was 1,000. The next all-time high was 11,000. The next all-time high was 60,000. What do you think will happen when we hit the next halving? Now, yes, this chart is a little bit dated. This snapshot was taken when the Bitcoin's price was about 18,000. Currently, we're at about 28,000. But look, the all-time high was about 70,000 here as well. And look what's happening to the price. Even to this day, we saw a little bit run up. But if you look over here, we saw a little bit of a run up. Same thing over here. Look over here, a little bit of a run up. And if you look at the timeline, it's the same exact thing from 2020 to 2022. This is when we had the halving and look at its price. Two years of bull market. And look, right at two years at 2020, we are now in a bear market. And how long is this bear market going to last? Look at this chart from 2018 to 2020, two years from 2014 to 2016, two years. So from the looks at it from me, there's only one time period when this bear market will end as well exactly when the next halving starts. And also, if you want to know if the bottom is in for Bitcoin, if we look at the history, we can see that we hit a bottom and then we saw a slight recovery. We hit a bottom and then we saw a slight recovery. And if you look over here, if I pull this up over here, we hit a bottom and then a slight recovery. And look what happens after the recovery. We see some sideways movement until the halving happens and then the bull run. So that leads us to the question, what do you do with all this information? How can you capitalize off of all of this? Well, there are a couple ways you can go about this. Comparative to its all-time high, Bitcoin is still very cheap. We're sitting at around $28,000 at the time of this recording, and the all-time high is about $70,000. Now that you know that after we get a halving, the price of the market and Bitcoin goes up, you can take advantage of these prices that we have right now and buy Bitcoin while it's very, very cheap and ride the wave up once we see that next bull run. Or if you're willing to take a little bit more risk, what you can do is buy into these other altcoins like Polygon, Solana, Cardano or these all these other coins in the crypto market coins that have been around for a while and are also down a lot since it's all time high. And the reason why I say you can also get into these different altcoins is because of how the crypto market works is all these other altcoins follow Bitcoin's trend. So if Bitcoin starts to go up, so will all the other altcoins in due time. You will take on a little bit more risk buying into these altcoins compared to Bitcoin because they are a lot more volatile than Bitcoin. But you can also see a larger gain with with those investments as well. Essentially, what I'm trying to say is the best course of action right now to capitalize off this having is to keep on buying, whether it's five, 10, $50, whatever you can do. And especially buying right now while these prices are very, very cheap. And it's funny because there's actually a saying out there where Warren Buffett says, be fearful when others are greedy and to be greedy when others are fearful. And everyone swears they live by this because it's so easy to do. But when it comes time to buying and there's blood on the streets, no one ends up buying. Kind of like what we're seeing right now. I vividly remember a year or two years ago when Bitcoin was at $70,000, people were wishing they had bought Bitcoin at $50,000. Now look at the price. We're way below and yet people are still scared and not even buying, even though they said they would buy at double the price that we are right now. Look, I know it's a lot easier said than done, but we have history and we know what will happen. And look, if it happened just once, yes, we can say it was luck. Two times, maybe a coincidence, but it happened three whole times. You would be dumb not to believe it won't happen again. Look, I know what I suggested is a simple play just to keep buying, but trust me, it's the best play right now and that's what I'm 
I'm doing as well. Just accumulating as much crypto as I can with these very low prices. But that was it, guys. I just wanted to make a quick video talking about the halving and what it really means and how you guys can really capitalize off of it. Remember, the next halving is set to happen next year around April, so you have some time to come up with a good game plan. And as always, none of what I said today was financial advice. This was all just my opinion. But let me know what other videos you guys would like to see down in the comment section below. Let me know if you like this breakdown, if there's other stuff you guys want me to break down. Like I said, let me know in the comment section below. But other than that, I hope you guys have a great rest of your day and I'll see you guys in next week's video. Peace.